Well, I met Brady in Joe Haven, and I'd been working with youth and um, and in the community, handing out harmonicas, and we had fiddles and guitars, and um, it had been a pretty long session every day, but it was really great. And I noticed this one young girl who was in a wheelchair, and um, nonverbal, never spoke. She was always on the periphery. I'd see somebody wheel her back and forth. And uh, she always caught my eye, but never participated. She always seemed to be going by or back in the corner. And on the, the last day I was there, it was about five or six o'clock in the afternoon. I was, I was dead tired. I packed up all my gear and had it all put away and I was getting ready to leave. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this, this girl who I'd been noticing wheel in in a wheelchair by herself. And she came up to me in like the quietest voice that you've ever heard, like a, a whisper, basically. And what she said was, are you all done? And I said, yeah, I'm all done. I've got everything all packed up. And then five seconds later, I realized I'm not done at all. And uh, this is really an important moment. And so I said, just hold on a minute. And I, I set all the gear back up again. And um, I asked her what she wanted to do. And, uh, in, and again, in super tiny voice, she said, I want to sing. And I said, oh, what do you want to sing? And she said, I have something on my phone. And so I synced her phone up to this speaker that I had and got her a microphone. And she picked a song. And and sat in her wheelchair and in the quietest voice you've ever heard like she was there by herself not singing for anybody we hit the button and, and she sang along with this Michael Jackson song um, it was it was amazingly powerful it just it was a beautiful beautiful moment and and just reinforced the fact that you're never done no matter how tired you are and uh, this was a beautiful thing well, that, that ended, and she said that she wanted to sing another one. And uh, I said, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever you want to do. So she uh, picked the song. It was a, a Michael Jackson song. And I'll, I'll, all I remember about the song is that it kept having the words over and over again, make a change, make a change. And you could hear her a little louder this time while she's singing along, make a change. She, all of a sudden, um, wobbly as anything, uh, stood up and walked like three steps away from her wheelchair. And I was worried, like she was far enough away from her wheel wheelchair that if she fell, she was going to hit the ground. And, um, and she started singing this Michael Jackson song about making a change. And I fell apart. I started crying. I, was in a, I, I had my back to her at that point. I walked to the back of the room. And her parents came in <clears throat> towards the end of it, and, and they lost it too. And uh, it was this incredibly powerful moment with this brave girl named Brady who trusted me enough to do this. And she held back for eight days or six days or whatever it was, just being wheeled by, not participating until she felt it was safe to do so. And, and sang this song that just cracked me open. So after that, I, I didn't sleep. I was, I was really flattened and, and honored that she'd share this. When I got home, I um, got her address and I went out and bought a karaoke machine and a microphone and I mailed it to her place in, in Joe Haven. And um, yeah, just, oh man, just one of the most powerful moments of my life, a, a real gift. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> Brady. Hi. Holy moly. How are you? I'm good. Holy smokes. <laughs> it's great to see you. I heard a rumor Thank that you were here. Uh, Can I give you a hug? <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, it's so great to see you. I know. Wow. Oh, this is awesome. You're doing great. Yeah. No chair. Oh my god. That's phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. Are you still singing? Yeah. Good.
<laughs> karaoke machine still working? You don't need it now, right? Yeah. You can just sing. Yeah. That's incredible. Holy moly. <laughs> oh, I remember you. Yeah. Harmonicas, right? Yes. These things. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, I Good left a whole bunch. Again. Yeah, yeah. Got friends here. Come on in, guys. Come on in. No, I heard a rumor, Brady, that you were here. And uh, and I was just looking at that TV broadcast that you were on. That was so good. I'm Mike, by the way. Paul, nice to meet you. Yeah, this is awesome. No, Brady's a rock star. She sang Michael Jackson like I'd never heard before. For me, when I'm playing, uh, I'm not playing. Uh, everything else is playing. So, depending on the environment that I'm around, all the, the colors and the shapes and the sound play me. And I know that sounds goofy or, or fake or poetic or something, but it's not. It's just nuts and bolts for me. Um, I react and it, it goes through me and then I forget it. I don't remember anything that I'm doing. It's gone. And uh, it's partly because I guess of the synesthesia. It makes it really, really easy to absorb uh, this. And um, it, it's just, just the way I'm wired. Uh, for me, synesthesia isn't a condition, but it's an achievable state. I want to live where the soul is near the surface. I believe at important moments in our lives, our souls rise to the surface. I live for these moments of clarity, intense humanity, connectedness. There are people and places that dance on that edge, and it's usually above the tree line. In the north, your eyes aren't big enough. But if you listen, you may become a divining rod. With the people, the wildlife, and the ever-changing landscapes pouring through you at the speed of light. And if you're lucky, what comes out takes no thought. It's purely color, sound, and gratitude. Suddenly, you become part of all of 